Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we've got our score roundup video for you. Here we look at the games that got the highest score for the month on the channel going from the game that got the lowest score up to the game of course that got the highest. We are looking at the month that's just passed being May 2022. So which game got the highest score for that month? Well let's find out. Before we start then, we did review 8 games last month, but 2 of them I'm not going to put into the list because they scored so low. I will though mention them now just so that you are aware of the reviews existing and you can of course check those reviews and any others using the links in the top pinned comment. The first was Token Rambu Warriors which got a score of 48%. It's a Warriors game based on a free to play card game I believe, but was incredibly repetitive and committed probably the biggest game in sin of just being quite boring. We also reviewed KO the Kangaroo which got 49% and this to be fair is actually quite a decent game but it's let down massively by a bug that's practically game breaking in that it stops you from saving your progress. The publishers of that game did get in touch with us after our review and assured us that there is a patch on the way that will fix this issue. Okay onto the games from the list then and the first one in at number 6 was Wildcat Gun Machine. This twin stick shooter with a heavy emphasis on cats is fun to play as you make your way through maze like levels taking down a whole host of enemies to move on. The biggest gripe is that the game is just a bit too easy especially early on which does dilute that feeling of edge of your seat excitement that an arena type twin stick shooter should include. There are boss fights which are a highlight to be fair but things never feel quite fully realised in terms of the gameplay and it got a switch up score of 68%. In 5th place for the month was Deadcraft. This survival game had a bit of a twist in that your character was half human, half zombie and you needed to balance the strengths and weaknesses of both in order to progress through the game. On top of this you could actually harvest zombies to use to your advantage due to a bizarre spin on the farming element of the game and again this added a unique aspect to the gameplay. On the more negative side things do get quite repetitive and it does also suffer from one too many mechanics that don't respect the player's time but it's definitely one that some people will get a lot of enjoyment from. It got 69%. Coming in in 4th place was A Yuden Chronicle Rising. This is a prequel story to a game releasing next year, A Yuden Chronicle 100 Heroes, which itself is a successor to a classic game from the past, Saikuden. This particular entry is a side-scrolling adventure game where you'll be taking on a number of main or side quests, and it is the implementation of a lot of these quests, many of which boil down to quite monotonous fetch quests, that does hurt the gaming experience here. That's not to say that there isn't a decent game here because there is and the combat in particular does become quite enjoyable towards the end. All in all though it just feels like a bit of a precursor to something more which is exactly what it is I suppose. It got a switch up score of 74%. Into the top 3 and in 3rd place was the NIS Classics Collection Volume 2. This brings two of Nippon Ichi's older games to the Switch being Mekai Kingdom Reclaimed and Rebound and the longest named game I've ever seen ZHP Unlosing Ranger vs Dark Death Evil Man. Both are tactical RPGs albeit with slightly different mechanics between them. They'll both appeal to anyone who has enjoyed the Disgaea games before and they do hold up quite well, although it would have been nice to have seen some quality of life features added rather than just straight ports. Still worth a look though if you enjoy the genre, it got a switch up score of 76%. In second place was Cotton Fantasy. This new entry in the Cotton series, a series that has been brought to the West in full force in recent years, having evaded it for so long, includes all of the bright colours and imaginative enemies that you would expect from a game in the cute em up subgenre and backs this up with very tight gameplay. 
It includes a number of different playable characters, some of which really do change up the gameplay mechanics and make subsequent playthroughs feel very different. Add to this a unique level for each playable character and one further character to unlock and there is definitely a lot of longevity here as well as the online leaderboards of course, the bread and butter to many for the shoot 'em up genre. Even with this amount of content it is perhaps a little expensive but it's a very good shooter nonetheless, it got a switch up score of 85%. And in first place for the month was Wolfstride. This RPG sees you taking on a team of three competing in a mech battling tournament. What's quite interesting about this game is less time is spent battling with the mechs and it's much more about the preparation that goes into each battle as you try to make your way through the tournament. Some will no doubt find this disappointing but it really is a unique take on the formula and it avoids the obvious path such a game could have taken. The art style is incredibly appealing with that grayscale look and a heavy manga influence and the fleshed out characters and voice acting really do add to this. It's admittedly very niche but if you are on board with the premise then it's a bit of a gem to be fair and it got a switch up score of 89%. So there you have it, another month, another roundup of the scores given. Not a great month for releases, it must be said. It's probably been the driest month of the year so far. To be fair though, it does look like June is going to be a better month, so there's that to look forward to. As I said, links to all of these reviews, including the two that I didn't go into full details about, are in the top in comment if you want to see the full story. And don't forget, if you are looking for eShop credit, you can use our website, switchup.gg. There's also games for pre-order on there, including Mario Strikers, which is out soon, of course. If you do use this method, it does help the channel out, which is very much appreciated. A quick thank you to our Patreons, as always, for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.